Stay all day. You're now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go getter energy that moves anyone out there, yes, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together into one bundle. One pack is one philosophy. There's a book on the subject. You are listening to the masterclass, everyday masterclass that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is developing your talent stack. Developing your talent stack. For those of you who are not familiar with this concept of the talent stack, you may recall masterclass number 1484, just a couple weeks ago, the topic was the skills to build on skills, building complementary skills that can help you out. But this idea of the talent stack actually is lifted from an author by the name of Scott Adams. He wrote a book called, he wrote several books. One of them is called How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win in Life. Um, I think I got that title right. He also wrote a book called Loser Think. He wrote another one called, man, I can't even remember the name of the other book. But there's another one that he wrote. He wrote several books. But Scott Adams, is a, he's very prominent on Twitter these days. He often gives his opinions on what's going on politically. But his books that I've read, a lot of it is a lot of uh, self-help stuff. And that's what I like best about uh, Scott Adams' material. And the talent stack, which I'll explain in a minute, is not a brand new concept. I mean, I heard James Altucher, another author, who is, you can find on Twitter or all, all the social medias, has his own podcast as well. He talked about this exact same concept, but he will call it the intersection of skills. Now, the reason why I'm giving Scott more credit than I give James for the subject is because Scott gave it a better name and he delved into it deeply in one of his books, so he gets more credit for it. That's just the way that it works. So what this subject here today is about is finding the sweet spot where your skills will separate you from the masses and make you a truly unique individual. Is that something that you'd be interested in? Would you be interested in standing out with the art of drawing attention like we talked about yesterday? through your actual skills, not because of some gimmick or not because you got lucky, but because you have some actual skills that make attention accrue to you. Would you like to do that? There is a way that there's a science to doing this, what we're talking about here today, developing your talents that, that will naturally draw attention to you, the art. All right, you want that combination and you should keep listening. Actually, what you should do besides just listening is grab a pen and paper or open a new note in your phone and take notes on what I'm saying here today because even though you may have access to this forever, doesn't mean you won't remember what I said. Let's get into it. Point number one, the topic once again is developing your talent stack. Point number one, what is the talent stack? Simply put, the talent stack is a combination of skills that when mixed together, create a concoction that makes you uniquely valuable. Shall I repeat that? Yeah, I think I should repeat that. The talent stack is a combination of skills that when those skills are mixed together within you, not just by anybody, but by you, they create a concoction that makes you uniquely valuable in the world or in your space, in your industry, et cetera, et cetera. So for certain things, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about uh, some talent stacks that have been combined and created new things, some things that became uniquely valuable and unique in their space. So let's talk about, first of all, objects or ideas that combine talent stacks. If we take the concept of blogging, which is not new, and there are a lot of people doing it, but we add in the concept of giving people a limit to how much space they can use on their blog or in each post, then we get this platform called Twitter. Where Twitter is, when it first came out, they promoted it as microblogging. They don't call it that anymore, but when it first came out, that's what it was, and you can still say that that's what it is, because there's a record of every tweet that you put out, every one of those micro blogs that you put out. The thing is, you have a limit. It used to be 140 characters, now it's 280 characters. That blog, plus the space limit, you get Twitter. That is a brand new thing, but Twitter did not invent blogging. Twitter did not invent space limits, but when they combined the two, they were the first one to combine them, and that's how you get Twitter. That's what made it unique. When you combine, let's say, computers, were they brand in the early 2000s, were computers new? No. Were MP player, MP3 players new? No, they were relatively new, but not that new. What about making phone calls and sending text messages? Was that new? Hell no. But when you combine all three, computers plus an MP3 player, plus making phone calls, plus sending and receiving texts, what do we get? We got this new thing called the iPhone, or you could say the smartphone, 
but it was basically the iPhone. They dominated that platform, still do to this day. If you take the concept of radio, which has been around since before all of us were alive, and you combine that with being able to publish whenever you want instead of just being on a specific schedule, what do you get? You get podcasting. When you take, for example, let's talk about people. So those are some examples of concepts or softwares or platforms or ideas that combine this whole principle of the talent stack. They took certain skills, combined them together, they stacked them together, and they created something brand new with that talent stack. For people, for example. Basketball and YouTube, not too long ago, not in all of us were alive, most of us were alive when this happened. Combining basketball and YouTube, that was a very unique thing not too long ago. I actually used that combination, that talent stack, my ability on the internet and my ability on a basketball court to help me stand out in the internet space. But nowadays it's common. Now everybody's doing it. You're not going to stand out just by combining those two because it's become a normal thing now. If you are a rapper who also was a singer, you get somebody like Drake. I mean, he's still pretty unique <laughs> to this day. He still owns that space of being a rapper plus someone who's actually a capable singer. I mean, he's not a great singer, but he's a capable singer. If you combine reality television uh, theatrics with politics, you get Donald Trump. Now, that reality TV and politics has been around for a long time, but he was the first one to combine both of them and actually do so successfully. Some people say, well, he's not successful. Well, he won the damn election, so you can call it whatever you want to call it. But he combined the two. And that combination, a lot of people said, no way is that going to work. And then it worked. And now people got to take it seriously. So these are simple ideas put together. So the idea of the talent stack is, of course, you have to develop these skills. And we're going to talk about that as we get deeper into this conversation. But the whole concept of the talent stack is to take abilities that you already have and find new combinations of those abilities and or develop new abilities and find a ways that those abilities or whatever abilities you have at your disposal, how you can combine them together in certain ways to create new sets of skills that will make you uniquely valuable in the marketplace, whatever marketplace you happen to be in. You don't have to be uniquely valuable to the whole world. You can be uniquely valuable to a certain niche audience of people. When I started putting basketball videos and combined them with YouTube, it didn't make me world famous, but it made me very known to a niche specific audience of people who were going on the internet, hoping to find some information about how they could get better at basketball. And that audience, that niche audience was enough of an audience that it created an opportunity for me. And you can do the exact same thing with your stacks of talents. And listen, we only on point number one. So I'm going to tell you more about how to make this work for you. These are simple ideas, what I'm giving you here. But the point is, I move on to point number two, cliffhanger right there. Today's topic, once again, is developing your talent stack. Point number two, you do not have to, or maybe you can't, even if you wanted to, be the best in the world at one singular particular thing. It may be hard to be the best in the world at, listen, I don't think Donald Trump's the best in the world at politics, and he probably wasn't the best in the world at reality TV, but he was the first one to combine the two. I was not the best in the world at basketball, arguably, and I was not the best in the world at publishing video, editing or publishing video. I, I will tell you myself that I'm not the best in the world at that. I barely do any edits to the videos that I put out, but I was the first one to combine the two, and that's what created something unique, again, at the time. Now, it was unique then, but so many people started doing it that is no longer unique. The point is this, there can only be one LeBron James or Michael Jordan or uh, Rafael Nadal or Serena Williams or Steve Jobs. There can only be one person who's the best in one particular vertical, especially if it's a very popular vertical like playing a sport or being a movie star or being a rapper or something that a whole lot of people know about and a lot of people are partaking in. There can only be one person who's the best. And there are only going to be a handful of people who even have an argument, a claim to say that they're the best instead of this person. But what you can do, even though you may not be able to get into that upper echelon of being amongst the, the best category, the best conversation, what you can do is combine the skills that you do have and make a new blend. But what I want to make sure I'm making clear to you here is that you need to be competent in the skills that you're combining. All right, so you can't be a terrible basketball player and then combine it with YouTube and say, oh, well, I'm going to be the first terrible player on YouTube because nobody's going to be interested in that skill set because you're not showing people anything that they want. So you have to be competent in what you're doing. Again, now, with the combinations that I give you, with the platforms, the great thing about them 
is that they didn't have to be competent and actually Twitter didn't have to be competent in blogging themselves. These didn't have to be competent in providing a platform for people to blog. And they had to create a good enough idea and a good enough argument for why anybody would want to be limited in how long they can write when they want to put something out on the internet. I mean, on WordPress or any blogging platform, you can write as much as you want. You had an HTML based website, you can write a 200 page blog post if you want to and nobody's going to stop you. Listen, Amazon allows you to publish books to their Kindle direct publishing platform every single day. It doesn't matter how long that book is. If it's digital, you can write a 3,000 page book if you want to. If it's a print book, I think the limit is 800 pages. When I wrote my book, Dre Philosophy, Volume Zero, we had to make a lot of edits to the, the formatting and everything to make it fit because it was too many pages and Kindle would not accept it. But we did make it fit. And that book is literally 800 pages. That's Dre Philosophy, Volume Zero, in case you didn't know. But the whole point is this. They allow you to publish as much as you want. You can write as much as you want. So Twitter had to make the argument for why it mattered, why somebody would have a, want to have a limit to how much they would be allowed to publish and once they got people to accept that then it became a great platform now it's not even a you don't even call twitter micro blogging now is more like a more like a news and discussion platform than it is a micro blogging platform so it evolved into something different based on the way people are using it but the whole concept took on a life of its own because twitter was able to convince people that the combination of blogging and a limit would allow people to kind of get that instantaneous hit of dopamine of getting blog posts from what, a thousand people, however many people you want to follow. All you got to do is just scroll through the timeline. So I couldn't, for example, get recognition as the best basketball player in the world. But again, when I started putting training videos out there, I could claim the title of being the first person to combine the training videos with the basketball. Am I the best trainer in the world? Probably not, because I'm not a trainer. Am I the best player in the world? Probably not. I'm not even playing in the NBA. But I was the first one to combine the two. And I think I might be able to claim the title of the best basketball player multiplied by author. The mix of basketball player, author, I think I may be able to claim that title. But that's a different conversation for a different day, probably not even for this show. There was a tennis player by the name of Anna Kornikova. Russian uh, female who's about the same age as me, late 30s right now. And she was a good tennis player. She was good enough to get on the, the women's tennis tour, but you got to be damn good to get on it. But she wasn't a great, she wasn't a spectacular, amazing tennis player. But Anna Kornikova's looks, her physical looks, made her stand out to the point that she was famous, not for what she was doing on the court, but just because she was such a good looking lady who was also a pretty damn good tennis player. And that made her stand out. And listen, looking good is part of a talent stack. All right, good, good physical looks is a talent or a gift or a skill or whatever you want to call it. That is, that's something to mark off on the box. If you're listing down your list of abilities or assets, the things that can work in your favor, the fact that you look good is something that you should put on the list if it is actually true. Okay. <laughs> now, trying to be the best in the world is hard. Now, it's really hard to be the best in the world. And as I said, only one person can be the best. But being the only at what you do, where you take a combination of things, hopefully that are complementary, hopefully that work together, hopefully they are skills that build on skills. Like we talked about in Masterclass number 1484, you can make yourself stand out as long as you can make sense of why those skill, that skill combination will help other people. Again, Twitter told people, all right, let's make sense of why we want to combine blogging and a shorter amount of space that you're going to have. Donald Trump had to make sense of why we want to combine a reality TV guy and slash a real estate guy slash branding guy who wants to get into the political world. And he made a compelling enough argument that he convinced enough people to vote for him that he was able to win that win the election. Drake had to make the argument. I don't know if he had to come out and explicitly say it, but through his music, he had to make the argument with the public as to why someone would want to hear somebody who sings and raps at the same time. Why not just be a singer or just be a rapper? But he was able to make that argument and people were, people bought into it. So these are simple ideas, but again, you have to be able to let the public know, the marketplace know, whoever that market is, how that this new combination that you're creating, where you're the only one or at least the first one to do it, makes sense. How is it going to benefit other people? And point number three, today's topic is developing your talent stack. Point number three is this. For your talent stack, you must look at your skill set, your current skill set, and you must develop complementary skills. You must develop the skills to build on skills. So again, Masterclass number 1484 is a perfect complement to what I'm talking about right here. Skills that will help build on slash enhance what you already have. Also see my Masterclass number 1509 where I talked about developing streams of income. I talked about symbiotic, symbiotic offerings. 
So for example, if you're a personal trainer and you are dominating the personal training space, you got all these clients, everybody knows you, you're doing great as a personal trainer, maybe you might wanna start putting together meal plans for people because since you're already working them out in the gym, you know that if they eat terribly, everything that you do in the gym is gonna get canceled out by what they do in the kitchen. So why don't you start making meal plans for them? That's a symbiotic offering. So if you can do that and you're good at it, that will only help your personal training skills. It will only complement that skill. Now, if you're already making people meal plans and you're a great personal trainer, maybe you might start developing your own supplements. Or maybe you might start making your own meals. You might start selling people the meals themselves. So you got the whole stack from how they eat to when they and what they eat and why they're eating it and to what they're doing in the gym. You could take over their whole fitness slash health lifestyle. These are symbiotic offerings, but you would need to develop the skill, right? You can't just become, you can't start offering people meals if you don't know how to cook. You can't offer people nutrition plans, you know nothing about nutrition. You can't offer people personal training if you don't have any certifications probably, or you haven't had any training yourself as to how to train other people. So you have to develop these skills that build on other skills. This is what I mean when I say developing complementary skills and developing complementary skills, if you notice what I'm saying here, that example I just gave you, this will allow you at the same time to develop complementary streams of income, symbiotic offerings that will create streams of income that all support each other. Now, what you don't wanna have is streams of income that don't go together at all, because then it's like you're running two different businesses at the same time, and you know what the saying is about trying to chase two rabbits at once, you end up catching neither one. So when you create these symbiotic skills, skills that support and help each other, then you will also create symbiotic streams of attention, streams of energy, streams of being able to give back, streams of being able to serve, and streams of income for yourself. So for example, using myself again, I was playing basketball, that was my thing. My skills with basketball, combined with my skill in shooting video, combined with my skill on the internet, they all complemented my basketball ability and then I can put it on YouTube. So video was YouTube, the internet was also YouTube, and then being able to play basketball, that created a brand new talent stack that nowadays, how many people are using that talent stack to drive their whole careers? They only have to play on the team. All you gotta do is have a, a court in a backyard and a camera and at least in a compelling enough personality, maybe some editing skills, and boom, you got yourself an entire career. If you're a great sports coach, for example, in any sport, if you are a skilled trainer, or at least you know something about physio and taking care of the body and how people's bodies move and how people's bodies fatigue and how to get bodies stronger, that kind of skill could help complement your ability as a coach. Or maybe if you're a skilled motivator, you're good at motivating people, you don't have to be a coach to be a good motivator and you don't have to be a good motivator to be a good coach, but if you have that combination of both, they would actually help each other. A great motivator could also be a pretty good coach and a good coach could also be a pretty good motivator. So someone who can do both, that coach who has the great motivational skill at the same time will be able to keep their team excited or that great motivator who also can coach people. You could have a, a coaching business on the side of your motivational speaking or whatever it is that you're doing, putting your videos out or writing your books. So these are skills that complement each other. So what you need to think about is what skills do you already possess? Where are you already creating results? Where are you already getting paid? Where are you already serving people and producing outcomes that people appreciate? And then ask yourself this, what skills would complement this and actually enhance what I'm doing? What skills could I develop that would make what I'm doing now even better than what I'm already doing? What would make this, what would make me get to an even higher level? How can I make myself more money? Or how could I serve more people? How could I take the people I'm already serving and what is the thing that they need before they come to me? What's the thing they need after they come to me? And how can I start supplying that? Or can I start supplying that in a way that I can just become more of the in-house one-stop shop for those people? So for example, if you are a personal trainer, again, if you're a personal trainer, you may have some clients who they eat terribly even though they come and work out with you all the time. So they're counteracting what they're doing with you with what they're doing in the kitchen. So how about you start helping them out with what they're doing in the kitchen? Or maybe you got people you train and that's what they do. You could say that's before or after, right? The personal training, they eat before, they might eat after. But what about how they're taking care of their bodies afterwards? Like, are they stretching? Are they getting enough sleep? Are they you know, taking walks? Are they drinking enough water? These are all things that the trainer will probably ask one of their clients to make sure that their client gets optimal results. So how about 
you start writing down, eat this, don't eat that list, and just add that in for an extra 20 bucks. I'll write you a eat this what you can eat, this what you can't eat list to go along with my personal training. Now you just created yourself a separate little stream of income, a little bit of extra money that you make with every single client. I'm giving you these ideas, but you can come up with your own. What skills can I develop that will complement my current skill sets? And if you are, I'll give you a, another example. If you're in a public facing job, such as politics or music or sports, if you're a good looking individual, this will help you gain fans and support. That is a skill. Again, I talked about this a couple moments ago. Being a good looking individual in a public facing job is a skill. Now, you're a good looking individual and you work in a closet or you work in some, uh, you work from home in a building and nobody ever sees your face, then you're not utilizing that skill. So you may want to get a different job where you can get seen or do something different with that job so you can get yourself seen. Utilize the skills that you have. So you got to, first of all, take inventory of where you're at and what you have to offer and then ask yourself, where do I have some complementary abilities? Point number four. Certain today's topic, once again, is developing your talent stack. Certain skills, this is point number four. Certain skills almost always enhance talent stacks. So these skills that I'm about to tell you about are the kind of skills that no matter what you do for a living, no matter how you feel about anything that I've said today, these are skills that you will want to develop and have moving forward no matter what you are doing, no matter where you are going, okay? Public speaking, this is one of the most valuable skills that you can develop, doesn't matter what you do. If you're a coach, if you're a computer scientist, if you're a, I mean, podcasting is public speaking, YouTubing is public speaking. If you're an author, if you can get better at public speaking, there are people who don't really read books, but if they like hearing your speech or like watching your video or like listening to your podcast, they might go read books because they like, they want to read your book. And that might get them into reading books, period. So now you got them to watch your video and you got them to buy your book simply because you were good enough as a public speaker. So public speaking slash communication skills will always be in high demand, ladies and gentlemen. If you have not invested in your communication skills, that means you're public speaking, you're talking to other people one on one, listening to other people. Those skills will always enhance any talent stack. There is no skill in the world that would not be enhanced by a stronger ability to communicate. I talked about this in masterclass number 1257. The topic, invest in your communication skills. That's masterclass number 1257. And a couple days later, masterclass number 1260. People skills that will improve interpersonal relations immediately. I suggest that you consult both of those both of those master classes immediately. Skills, skill development, public speaking, one of the best skills you can always develop. Master class number 1185, also I told you about four basic skills that will separate you from the average masses. Master class number 1028, the skills that you will need for the future. I've talked about these exact things in number 1028, so make, make sure you go check out 1028. Also master class number 604, how to fully exploit your skill set. So these are all masterclass on skills and I got a bunch more. I'll tell you one more. Masterclass number 584, six skills that every human being needs for 2018 and beyond. So I recorded that at late 2017, but I said and beyond. So 2020 is beyond 2018. So make sure you go check that masterclass as well. Here's another skill. Another complimentary skill that will always enhance your talent scat is your ability to write. Writing is a communication skill. When you write something down, you're communicating it to another person through what they have, they have to read it. You write it down, they read it. Public speaking is you say it, they listen. Writing is just another form of getting your word across. That is another communication tool. Looking good is a, a skill that will enhance your talent stack. It draws people's attention. Just not too long ago, I, I don't follow a whole lot of people on social media. I don't pay attention to celebrity gossip, but there was one piece of celebrity news that just found me because so many people were talking about it. Khloe Kardashian posted this picture where she looked like a completely different person. I looked at the pic, I saw that it was, somebody said something about Khloe Kardashian. Then there was a picture attached to the, I think it was a tweet. And I'm like, well, who is this girl? Because I don't, I don't recognize this girl's face. And then I read through some of the replies and I'm like, wait a minute, that's Khloe Kardashian in the picture? It doesn't look anything like her. Now, I have no opinion to offer you as to how she completely changed her appearance and looks like a completely different person from the, what I thought Khloe Kardashian looked like. But the point is this, she obviously thinks she looks good and a lot of people agree and looking good is a skill that will help enhance her talent stack and just draw more attention to her. So, and as I, the case in point, there were a whole lot of people talking about this for no other reason than she just posted a picture and looked like a completely different individual. And I guess a lot of people felt like an improvement over what she looked like before. <laughs> so this is proof in the pudding. Point, another one, having a sense of humor. 
Sense of humor is a communication tool. Notice how we keep coming back to communication? Having a sense of humor, not taking yourself too seriously, being able to break the ice, being able to make other people feel comfortable, adding a touch of levity to any conversation or situation, being able to cut through tension with humor. These skills of having a sense of humor will always, always, always enhance a talent stat because people like to laugh, people like to feel good, people like to relax, and people will make decisions much more quickly and easily when they are relaxed and when they are uptight. Develop your sense of humor. Also, sales slash persuasion. This is a skill that will always enhance your talent stat. You can persuade other people. That means you can get your way. You can get people to do what you want them to do. You can help people do what they need to do for themselves, but they may be reluctant to do it if you have the ability to sell and persuade. If you can sell and persuade, that means you can always make money for yourself. You can always create opportunities for yourself. You can always get your foot in the door when you're on the outside looking in. I wrote a book called The Seller's Mindset to help you with this. You can get that at workonmygame.com slash sell, S-E-L-L. Notice that of these skills that I said, public speaking, writing, having a sense of humor, and sales and persuasion are the five things I listed. The only one that is not a communication tool is looking good. And looking good is a communication tool too because when people see you, you're communicating something. But all the other four are explicit communication skills. So if you develop all your skills of communication, for example, speaking out loud, writing the written word, being able to read the room and read other people and make them feel relaxed and being able to persuade other people. These four skills will always, always, always make whatever skills you already have better. So I suggest that you start focusing on and developing these skills like yesterday. Let's recap today's topic, which is developing your talent stack. Talked about this in Masterclass number 1484, the skills that build on skills. Scott Adams, the person I first heard use this phrase, the talent stat, is basically taking a set of skills, combining them all together, and with that combination, you are able to make yourself valuable and unique in the marketplace. Point number one, the talent stat. Combination of skills will mix together, create a concoction that makes you uniquely valuable in the marketplace, as I just said. Like Twitter said, blogging plus space limit equals Twitter. Computer plus MP3 player plus calls and text equals an iPhone. Radio plus publishing whenever you want equals podcasting. Basketball plus YouTube videos equal, back then, equal Drake Baldwin. Nowadays, it equals a thousand people. Drake was a combination of rapping and singing. Reality TV plus politics equal Donald Trump. Simple ideas, but the point is, point number two, you don't have to, or maybe you cannot, be the best in the world at one particular vertical. There's only one LeBron or Serena or Steve Jobs, but you can combine skills and make a new blend. That is what can make you stand out. Trying to be the best is very hard to do. You may never get there, but being the only requires only creativity. And point number three, to find your talents that you must develop complementary skills, skills to help build on or enhance what you already have. Masterclass number 1509, I talked about developing symbiotic offers to create streams of income is the exact same concept, but just applied to talent and applied to, applied to skill. Scott Adam calls it the talent stack, but we can call it the skill stack. It just sounds better as talent stack. So if you're a great sports coach, for example, being a great trainer or a great motivator can enhance your, your coaching skill. If you're in a public facing job by politics, looking good, like Anna Kornikova can help you gain fans and help you gain support. Point number four, certain skills almost always enhance talent stacks. I would just put this under the, the umbrella, those skills, communication, public speaking, writing, having a sense of humor, sales and persuasion. These communication skills will always, always, always make things better and easier for you. Develop these talent skills, enhance these talent skills, and use them as often as you possibly can. I guarantee you they will always pay you back. Work on your game. Dre all day.